All right, hi guys. Happy Tuesday. So tonight we are going to talk about how to go from a hobby coach to a full-time working coach. And I've had a couple of people ask me to talk about this topic and I realized that I haven't actually talked to my team about it. And I'm like, you guys, this is such a, a pivotal thing to realize as a coach, especially at the level that you guys are at, because you know everyone is at least an Emerald coach or higher if you're watching this, and you hopefully have some big goals that you want to achieve in this business, or you wouldn't be on this, okay? So I get that it's intimidating, you guys, to think of making a virtual health business your full-time gig, and I think that when we have that that intimidation factor, and we're saying maybe this can happen, maybe that can happen, and we're not jumping in with both feet first, and we're having like one toe in, we're dipping it, right? I was a toe dipper. Um, we are preventing ourselves from going from a hobby coach, hobby coach to a full-time working coach. Now, before I get into my tips, you guys, because I have like four or five tips I want to go over, I want to just walk you guys through some things because a lot of you guys have seen where I'm at in my business right now, okay? And you've seen that our team has achieved the highest rank and you've seen that our team has been in the top 10 and you've seen, you know, that we're a seven-time elite team and all of this stuff and it might just look easy to you about how I do my business because I am in that mindset of a full-time working coach. And, you know, I went on a vacation with one of my good friends over the um, – back in November, she'll probably watch this, and she said, you just make it look so effortless, like you just do the work, and it's been really inspiring to just watch you do the work. Guys, it was not always like that for me, okay? If I look back, I signed up in 2009. It took me two years, two years to jump two feet in, okay? So if it's taking you a little bit of time, that's okay, but you have two very important dates in this business, okay? A sign-up date, the day that you actually signed up as a coach, and then your start date. Your start date is when you finally get over your ish and you say, I can make this thing a legit business. I can make this business six, seven, eight figures. The sky's the limit, honestly. I think a lot of you guys hear that and you like throw it around. You're like, yeah, the sky's the limit. Do you truly believe that you can do whatever the heck you want to do with this business? Because I didn't believe that until 2011 when I was in a job that I freaking hated. And I was very underpaid for having a master's degree in public health nutrition. And I was watching, I remember it was like a, a breakthrough moment for me talking with my upline that she was making in a week what I was making in a, a, a year at my full-time job. And it was like, psh, lights went off, you know, where I was like, wait a second, how is that even possible? Like, how is that possible? And I know she works so extremely hard, but she's having fun and she's doing things that I wanna be able to do. And it was like, okay, so why not me? Why can't I do this? And that's where you know my mindset shifted, you guys. But I knew that I had to show up as this full-time working coach before I actually became a full-time working coach. And I had to sacrifice, and I still have to sacrifice, okay? But because I made that decision back then, you guys, I had enough respect for myself and for the team that I was growing, please listen to this, enough respect for my team that I was not gonna turn back to be a hobby coach, okay? Because they deserved me to show up, show up as a full-time working coach. Because if I'm not gonna do it, they're not gonna do it. So when I made that decision, it wasn't just for me, it was for my team. It was for my future family. At the time, I didn't have children, I wasn't married, but I knew that that was coming in the future and that that decision was gonna be the thing that kind of set the dominoes in place, okay? So that's where my first tip comes in, you guys, is that you have to create a discipline muscle. I hear from people all the time, Mac, you're so disciplined. You're so disciplined. It's not easy for me either, you guys, but I had to create that muscle. Just like probably every single one of us can say, eh, I either really like to work out or I really don't like to work out. But there's days where you still don't wanna work out, right? And you still have to work those muscles. You still have to show up and do your workout. Same thing with this business. And it's not gonna happen overnight. You legit have to work 
on your discipline muscle every single day, every single day before it be, or until it becomes a habit. And you'll still have periods in your business. Gosh, I've been a coach for nine years, you guys, seven years of actually being with a legit coach, right? Um, but I have had periods where I've fallen back and I've had to say, oh, Meg, you're sliding back into that hobby coach mentality. You're going back to thinking small. You're shrinking down. You're not chasing those big goals. Instead, you're just kind of going through the motions. And I have to push myself back into that full-time working coach mentality, okay? So yes, you're gonna have days when you don't wanna do it. But the difference between a hobby coach and a full-time coach mindset is that when you're a hobby coach, you're gonna do it when it's convenient for you. Okay, and you're gonna do it, do it when it feels good. But the second that life gets hard, whether it be that your kids had a snow day, or that you know a family member, family member unfortunately gets sick, or something tragic happens in your life, or you get something extra at work, or whatever, you guys, you put this business on the back burner and you let go of all of your dreams and your goals. You're like, hmm. Right? Because it's just a hobby to you. But the difference between that and a full time working coach mentality is that even when you have ish hit the fan, you show up every single day, no matter what, because consistency trumps greatness every single day of the week. Okay? Consistency, consistency, consistency <laughs> trumps greatness, okay? So you need to work on that discipline muscle, you guys. I know a lot of you guys, if not all of you, hopefully all of you, are doing the Success Club System Tracker, and I make sure I mention that every time I speak, because you guys, that's where the magic happens. When you actually do that tracker, and you don't just cross things off, but you say, this is this is my to-do list. This is my, my business you know, with the outline of everything I'm supposed to do in my business every single day, I should be doing this stuff. I shouldn't be skipping my invites, right? Because your business will not grow. I should not be skipping my posts on social media because that's how people are getting to know me and I'm giving them value and that's why they're going to come back. I should not be skipping my connections because that's how I'm building those relationships. Each part of that to-do list is a puzzle piece that needs to be put together in order to have that puzzle make sense, right? Number two, you guys, you have to let go of control and control the things you have control over and let go of the things that you don't have control over, okay? So what are some things that we have no control over as a coach? We have absolutely no control over who says yes. When you can let go of that, God, it feels so much better, right? You also don't have control over who comments or likes on your posts. You know, there's days where I'm like, this post is going to be amazing. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, kind of flopped, right? And it's like, we have no control over that. We have no control over who watches our stories on Instagram. We have no control over who hits success club on our team. We have no control over who shows up every single day in hustles, okay? Or even getting on this Zoom. I had no control over who was gonna show up, okay? I have no control over who's going to take this business seriously and treat it like a full-time coach, okay? I have no control over who is gonna rank advance and actually go for it. Those are the things you have no control over, guys. But what do we do have control over? We have control over our mindset. Okay, you have control of your mindset every single day. Earlier today, I was stressed out. I was overwhelmed. Came home, my dog had ripped up a, a pack of gum. We didn't know if xylitol was in it or not, which is toxic to, to dogs. Like, I, this dog is going to be the death of us. Um, stressed out over that. My daughter's being a stinker. My husband's in a bad mood. And, like, just things were just spiraling, you guys. And I could feel myself getting in a bad mood. And I had a whole day of work in front of me. And instead of diving into my to-do list, I spent more time on my mindset, more time listening to Girl Stop Apologizing, more time focused on my vision of what I wanted to achieve in this business for the next couple months, more focused on my affirmations. And you know what? Even though chaos was breaking out around me, I find my, found myself in a better mood. And luckily, when you're in a good mood, it kind of ripples out, right? 
my husband started to get in a better mood. My daughter, she's a toddler, let's be for real. But things just started getting better, okay? So you have control over your mindset. You have control over being proof the product works. Yes, I'm an emotional eater. Yes, I have issues with food too. I've suffered from eating disorders. Guys, we have control over the nutrition aspect. I hope that you guys are all doing the ultimate portion fix right now because gosh, that information is amazing and it's gonna make you a better coach, okay? Even if you have 2B mindset and you're crushing it, you need to know about ultimate portion fix because your clients are going to do one of the two and you can't just master one of them and expect all of your clients to do that, okay? So ultimate portion fix, it's gonna teach you how to use the portion containers the right way. So we have control over being proof the product works. We have control over getting our workout in, even if you have to get it done at 10 o'clock at night or midnight, okay? There's times where I watch Lindsay Matway, who I absolutely adore, and she's working out at 11.30 at night because she probably had a day full of stuff, you guys, and that was the one time that she was able to show up and get her workout done, okay? That's dedication. Um, we have control over our own actions when it comes to doing this to-do list. So many people say, my time management, I don't have time to do all of this in the day. Yes, you do. Because if you caught yourself how many times you're scrolling the newsfeed mindlessly, or you're doing things that take up time that you should not be doing, you could have been doing your to-do list, okay? And I, that's where we go back to the discipline, you guys. I do not watch other people's Instagram stories, like even celebrities. Um, I don't watch, you know, even when my husband does Instagram stories until I get all of my stuff done, okay? If I start scrolling the newsfeed before I've gotten my to-do list done, it's like you have to create that habit where it's like, done, off. You can like the first picture. I remember my upline taught me this. Like the first picture, get out of the newsfeed, okay? We have control over our content. Are you self-serving or are you actually giving value to people, okay? So you should always ask yourself, am I actually giving people value? Are they gonna wanna come back to me? They have control over that. We have control over our consistency, okay? So guys, when I stopped focusing on the things that I had no control over, which was what my teammates did, and I started to focus on what I have control over, which is what I can do, things started shifting, okay? People, instead of having to pull people along, I saw that people were stepping up and leading and following what I was doing, because your coaches are gonna do what you do, not what you say what to do. Okay, so remember that it's our job to be our coach's mentors, not to pull them along, okay? And I had to, I'm such a people pleaser, and maybe some of you guys struggle with this too, I had to say, if you disappear, I can't come after you, okay? Because that's not fair to the rest of the team. And that was so hard for me to do. I used to be that coach that would say, I'm gonna reach out to five to 10 of my coaches, five to 10 of my coaches, every single day, and just check in on them. My coaches know I'm here for them. They know that if they text me or they message me, they'll hear back. Maybe not right away, because I've gotten very, very disciplined on when I have my phone in front of me, um, but they know that they'll hear back from me, and if they don't, they know to resend it, because I most likely opened it and then Tenley ran off and was doing something silly, okay? So you have to make sure that your team knows that you're gonna meet them halfway. If they wanna walk, walk next to them. Don't push your goals for them on them, okay? If they wanna run, run next to them. If they wanna sprint, sprint next to them, okay? It's your job to mentor them to whatever they want to achieve. And that's taking on the full-time coach mentality as well, you guys, is that you're saying, I'm your mentor. I'm not your micromanager. I'm not the person that's gonna tag you in all the comments to make sure that you see everything that's going on in the team. If you're serious about it, you're going to show up and check the team groups, right? Which is hard to do, you guys. It's hard to let go of that, that, that control, okay? Number three, you guys. If you are gonna grow into a full-time working coach, whether you want it to be a six, seven, eight-figure income business, whatever you wanna achieve, you guys, you have to grow you first, okay? So you have to act like the coach that you wanna be right now. So whether you are a inactive, emerald, right, or you're just teetering on emerald, or you're a diamond coach, or a fallen diamond coach, or whatever, okay, whatever rank you're at, think about what you want to achieve by the end of the year, 
Okay, what do you want to achieve by the end of the year? And I know that's so scary to think, you guys, but you have to. And you have to ask yourself every single day, how would that rank coach act in their business right now? Okay, we tried to go for Superstar Diamond like six times, you guys. And every time we failed because of this tip, I was not acting like a Superstar Diamond leader. I was not, I was acting like a five or six star diamond at the time, okay? And I couldn't figure out why we weren't achieving it, but I had to grow into that leader that my team deserved, okay? So if you are not acting like that person, you need to do it right now, okay? If you are trying to be, and this is gonna hit some of us, okay? If you're trying to be a five star diamond coach by the end of the year or higher, and you're inviting two to three people to challenge groups per day, and the next week you switch to coaching, and then the next week you guys two to three invites throughout the week, like or per day, you know, at the end, that's not gonna cut it, okay? Especially if you're an Emerald coach right now. You need to reverse engineer your goals and say, okay, I know a good rule of thumb is that if I talk to 10 to 12 people about a challenge group or 10 to people, 10 to 12 people about coaching because you have to recruit in order to build your team. Uh, that one to two of them is going to say yes. Okay, so if I'm an Emerald coach, I need to have at least five diamonds pop by the end of the year. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Embrace it, you guys, because this is a full-time working coach mentality, right? Okay, so let me break it down into how many I should invite per week, and then how many I should invite per day, and just do it, okay? There's no one that's going to hold your hand to do it. You need to commit to it and say that this is important to me, and I know that I can do it. The actions have to happen, okay? So act like that coach right now. You also have to make sure that you have a routine that gets you into the right mindset. Because I said, if you're gonna grow into this kind of leader, number one, it has to be your mindset, okay? And I've had so many, not so many, I've had a few people that I've been able to work with that I see things that have happened in their past that they haven't taken care of, and they, they hustle in the business, they hustle, they hustle, but they can't figure out why they can't get past a certain point. And it's because of past things, not in the business, but things that have happened in their life in the past that they haven't dealt with, okay? And it's messing with their mindset. It's that mean girl that keeps knocking on your door and you're letting her in. And every time you let her in, she shuts down those goals, you guys, okay? So you have to deal with those things. For me, I had things that I had to deal for, with from growing up, things that you know were holding me back before I could get to that point in my business, okay? So how do we, how do we grow into that? You have to have a morning routine, okay? And besides even the morning routine, I would say more of a working routine, okay? Before you sit down to work, and I think this will work better for most of us because it's hard in the morning. You have to have some kind of routine that gets your head on straight because I do believe in the law of attraction. And if you go into work and you're trying to attract people who will see the value in what you do as a coach and they're going to be working coaches, but in your head you're thinking, oh my God, I don't want to send these invites. Oh my God, I'm going to make people really uncomfortable. Oh my God, they're going to say no to me. Oh my God, are they going to block me? And you're saying all of these things to yourself guess what? You're going to attract people who act really crappy back to you. You're going to attract people who block you. You're going to attract people who ignore you. But if you have your head on straight and you're saying, you know what? I could literally change someone's life by giving them this invite. I could literally change someone's life by inviting them, you guys. If you go into your invites thinking about that, oh my gosh, it's so much more, so much more fun, right? You're like, oh my god, I'm like the fairy godmother. I have a chance to actually change someone's life. This is cool, okay? So I'm gonna give you my morning reference. I guess it's my work routine that I do every single day before I sit down and start answering messages and sending out invites and all that kind of jazz. Okay. The first thing I do is I spend three to five minutes meditating. Okay, so I use the app Headspace. And I do it because I have to shut off the mean girl too, you guys. And by meditating, I'm getting myself into like that zenful spot to be able to focus on the work that I want to achieve that day, okay? So three to five minutes of meditation. After that, I spend about two to three minutes of praying, 
okay? If you're not a prayer person, you can meditate a little bit longer, but I set my intentions with God for the work that I want to do that day and for the people that I want to attract, okay? Then I have affirmations. If you're not doing affirmations, I know you guys have probably heard everyone say that, but I guarantee there's probably half of the people watching this, if not more, that are not saying affirmations. And if you are, you're reading through them very quickly. They're ones that you made months ago, maybe even years ago, and you're not even like really like taking it in anymore. It's time to change those affirmations up. Okay, so you're saying things that you want to achieve and things that you want to change. Okay, one of the ones that I've been doing lately is that I say, I'm attracting people who see the value in what I have to offer as a coach. Another one, I'm attracting hardworking, disciplined coaches who want this as badly as I do, okay? And then you better believe I have to show up like that kind of coach too if I want to attract those people because you're never going to attract a coach better than where you're at right now, okay? After that, I list out 10 things that I'm grateful for. Now, I know for some people that's a little intimidating to say 10 things. Start with three, okay? Work your way up to 10. But it's crazy what happens if you can force yourself to sit down and create 10 things you're grateful for, okay? And I have a little, just a little booklet that I, and I go through planners like crazy, okay? Or not planners, um, little notebooks like crazy because I do my 10 list of 10 things. And then after that, I have three to five business goals, okay? So three to five business goals that I want to achieve within the next three months, you guys. So these are not like, yes, I want to say what I want to achieve by the end of the year, but I want my head so focused on what I'm doing over the next three months that it's all I can think about, okay? So three to five goals that you have that you want to achieve within the next three months. Okay, um, and then the last thing you guys is that I listen to about 10 to 15 minutes of personal development. Um, I just finished the 10X rule, I just started listening to Girls Stop Apologizing. I, I assume everyone's probably listening to it at this point. Um, amazing, love Rachel Hollis, but you know, I, I like that one a lot. Okay, so that's my, my work routine, you guys, and I do that every single day, and I have tried to skip it, believe me. There's been times where I'm like, I don't have time. I don't have time to do it. I'm just going to go on, and I'm going to start working, and guess what? I have a really crappy freaking work day, and then I can't understand why I'm in such a bad mood at the end of the day, and it's because I didn't take the time to actually get my head on straight. Okay, so you have to grow into the kind of person that you want to be. Okay, so you're acting like that coach through your actions, but also through your mindset. Because if you ask any of the top 10 coaches, even top 50 coaches, they have some kind of routine like this that they do every single freaking day. Okay, um, you also want to make sure that you are like I said, you're acting like that coach, but you're being an actionable coach versus a learning coach. Okay, so we have ultimate potion fix now, okay? And a lot of you are probably like, let's get through this as fast as I possibly can. The videos are so good. Worst thing you could do, okay? Sorry, Autumn, I love you to death. Worst thing you could do, because here's the thing. You're gonna spend hours upon hours upon hours watching the ultimate portion fix videos and not doing your work. So why not do a couple videos a day and still get your work stuff done, okay? Because you gotta do action, you guys. You can't just be a learner. Same thing with you know just watching all of the trainings. I tell my coaches, one to two trainings per week, okay? National Wake Up Golf should always be a non-negotiable, always. I rarely listen to that live because that's my work time. That's the time when I have a babysitter. That's the time when I can actually get my action done, okay? But I do listen to it either later on that day when I'm making dinner, driving in the shower, or driving in the car, because um, we have swim lessons on Monday nights, or um, when I am making, or getting ready in the morning the next day, okay? So I do listen to it every single day, and I take, or every single week, and I take one or two actionable steps from it and say, okay, what can I apply to my business? What jived with me? What did I like that that person talked about? Not everything they talked about, not all four or five tips. That's overwhelming, you guys. But I can pick one to two, okay? Um, the other thing, you guys, tip number four, and this is the last one, you guys, is that Beachbody has literally mapped out how to be successful in this business. Okay, actually I have another tip that I want to throw in at the end of this, okay? But Beachbody has 
mapped out everything for you, okay? If you are not using their Road to Elite and you are not using the Success Club System Tracker, you need to use it, okay? But you need to make it a point, if you're not an Emerald Coach, to get to Emerald Coach ASAP. So even if you're an active Emerald, in my eyes, you're not an Emerald, okay? I'm sorry if that's harsh and mean. I've been there, believe me. But you need to get back to an active Emerald ASAP, especially if you're trying to treat this like a full-time working coach, right? A hobby coach would say, I'm going to wait till I have two working coaches, okay? A full-time working coach would say, how am I going to make this happen? Who, who can I talk to? Who are my family members? Who are my friends? My spouse better be signed up. Like, I'm going to make this happen, okay? Because you're missing a huge opportunity, guys. I'm not going to get into everything about Emerald, but just all the points that accumulate over time and all that stuff, you're missing a huge boat by not being an active Emerald. You also need to make sure that you're hitting Success Club, okay? When people come to me and they say, I'm a full-time working coach, but I haven't hit um, Success Club in a couple months, we need to fix something, okay? I get sometimes we have slower months, you guys, but on those slower months, we have to step up our game, okay? We have to do more work. And yes, it's not fun, but it's your job, okay? And at the end of the month, if you're not helping at least three people get started on their journey, something's gotta give, especially if you're a full-time coach. And I know those are harsh things to hear, believe me. I almost had a mental breakdown in February. February is a very hard month for me, business-wise, but, I still knew, okay, I'm gonna have to put in more work and more effort to achieve the goals that I want to and be able to do it in March and April and May and everything, okay? So, um, those should be non-negotiable, you guys. And just keep going Emerald over and over and over and over again. You don't have to be saying, okay, I'm gonna go diamond in two weeks. That'd be amazing if you could do that, but that's a big, big thing to go from Emerald to diamond in two weeks. Instead say, I'm gonna sign up one to two coaches per week. Okay, that's it you guys. I'm gonna sign up one to two coaches per week. So many say one to two coaches per month. If you're a full-time working coach, one to two coaches per week, okay? So um, you also wanna make sure that you are, let's see, that you are um, knowing that before you hit two star, this business is really freaking hard. You need to wrap your head around that. Okay, and I remember when my, my upline told me this, I was like, oh man, but it's gonna take a really long time to get to two star. Wrong mindset to have, you guys. This business is gonna be hard until you hit two, well, it's still hard, but it's going to be harder until you hit two star. You are gonna be putting in a lot of time and effort and not getting a lot of rewards, okay? You're not going to see that income grow until you get to two star. Too many people stop at diamond, or they stop at one star, and I'm like, oh my God, you're right there, you're right there. If you could just keep hustling to two star and open your second business center, it's like you're double dipping, you guys. And then all of a sudden, it's like you all your hard work, you're getting double of it because you are building your second business center, which is also helping your business, your first business center. Okay. It's like when you build your, where, when you have your spouse's business center that you're working with him, right? So you want to make sure that you are, um, looking at the things that Beachbody has set up for you. So many people say like, what's the secret sauce, you guys stop asking for the secret sauce and just do the damn work. Just do the work you guys. Okay. So some things that I wanted to make sure that I shared with you guys, because I think it's really, really important to hear this stuff because we see income and we see all of this stuff. But what happened from going from a hobby to a full-time working coach? What did it do for my family? Not only did it make me like a completely different person, um, which has been great. That's what Kirk and Tenley and our baby boy deserve, okay? But my income has increased every single year. And insert dis disclaimer, you guys. When I walked away from my full-time working, uh, full-time job, in 2012, okay? So that was 2012. I had made the goal at the end of 2011. I said, I am gonna be a full-time working coach by May of 2012, and I did, okay? So I was able to do that because I was hustling, okay? And we were making about $1,000 a week at that point. And I think at 
the end of December 2011, it was like between 250 to 500 a week, okay? So I was hustling hard. And five months later, we went up to $1,000. That next year, it was 5,000. The next year, it was 10,000. It just kept growing, you guys. And because of that income, we've been able to you know, pay off $180,000 of student debt between my husband and I. We've been able to pay off the first mortgage on the house that we had before, two years after we moved in, okay? We've paid for our cars in cash. We've been able to pay for Tenley's college. We have a good chunk of money set aside for our second one's um, college. We are, I don't know if I can say this, Kirk might get mad at me. Well, let's just say that we, we may have paid off our house that we have currently, okay? So you guys, that's what it's doing, okay? We were able to take a trip to Disney World and not have to worry about spending money when you guys know Disney World is freaking expensive, but we didn't have to worry about it. We didn't have to worry about it, you guys, because of the hard work and the hustle that I put in to this business from going from a hobby to a full time. And it's not because there's something that I have that's special, it's because I was willing to do the work. And this is where my last tip falls into, you guys, is sacrifice, okay? So at the beginning we talked about creating that discipline muscle. Sacrifice is just as important when it comes to this business. You're going to have to sacrifice in order to grow your business. If you're expecting your business to grow from a hobby to a full-time working coach in one hour a day, I'm sorry to be completely honest with you, it's not going to happen, okay? You're going to have to sacrifice some things. You're gonna have to sacrifice some sleep. You're gonna have to sacrifice your lunchtime hour, okay? You're gonna have to sacrifice maybe, um, I'm trying to think, like dinner time, okay? Some people I've talked to that are like, oh, we all kind of just like watch TV during dinner. Okay, that's not what we do at my house. That's okay if you do it at your house. You should better be working, working and eating at the same time, okay? Because why are you watching TV? You should be working, okay? Going to bed. My husband's already up in bed. My daughter's sleeping. Okay, I'm putting the time into my business right now, and that's okay. I have to sacrifice my nighttime. Um, you're gonna have to sacrifice, I'm trying to think other things that you can sacrifice. It's time, basically, you guys. It's sacrificing time. But you also wanna look at the things that I'm not saying to sacrifice family time, okay? But your, your family doesn't need four or five undivided hours. They need one or two quality hours. And I wanna share a little story real quick and then we'll be done, you guys. After I had my daughter, okay, before I had my daughter, I had all the time in the world. I was like working and I would like say that I worked like six hours, but when I look back, I'm like, I think I basically worked all day. Like poor Kirk, I was on my phone all the time, okay? And then after I had my daughter, it was like, okay, I've worked really hard. Now I'm, you know, I'm gonna reap the benefits and I don't want to sacrifice any time with this baby. So I went from working full-time working hours as a coach down to one to two hours a day, okay? And because of that shift, you guys, I watched my team and I watched my business start going down because I wasn't willing to sacrifice anymore. And because of that, you guys, I had to take a hard look in the mirror in 2016 and say, Megan, you need to sacrifice. If you want this business to continue to grow, you've got to figure out where you can sacrifice and where you can't. And Melanie Mitchell, I heard her say, you know, your kids don't need four or five hours of quality time with you because guess, let's be for real, you guys. If you're doing four to five hours, what are you doing? You're responding back to messages on the edge of the couch while your kid is over there trying to get your attention right? And then you feel like the crappiest mom in the entire world because your kid is getting mad at you because you're on your phone. And then you're getting frustrated with your kid because you can't do your work, right? I've been there so many times, you guys. So instead I said, stop setting these huge expectations, Megan. Stop saying, and I know I'm really yelling at myself when I'm calling myself Megan, but stop setting these expectations for yourself of how many hours make me a good mom. How many of you guys do that? Where you say, but my team and, or my family needs this many hours of me every single day to be a good mom. 
No, they don't. They need one to two hours or whatever you can set that hours. I know for me, it was one to two hours of undivided attention from me where I'm playing and I'm being goofy and I'm dancing and I'm loving on my family with my phone turned off, my Apple iWatch off, everything off because they get mommy. And guess what? They're happy, I'm happy, and I'm still able to have the time to grow my business. Okay, so figure that out for you. How are you able to find those power pockets where you can sacrifice? Because if you're just trying to work, like I said, one to two hours, and then the rest of the day, you're like, okay, I'm a full-time working coach, but I worked one to two hours. No, you're not. No, you're not, you guys. I've been in this business long enough to know that that is not gonna grow into something big, and I know that's a harsh reality, you guys, but it's the truth, okay? You have to put more time into it. You need to be willing to put more time into it because, my gosh, you guys, it is so worth it. Now, some of you guys might think, are you kidding, Meg? Like, you've been a coach for seven years and you're still hustling and sacrificing? Yes, because I love this business and my team deserves it, okay? But also, I'm not done. I am not done helping people in this business. I'm not done helping my coaches reach six to seven to eight figures and walk away from their full-time job and be home with their family and pay off debt and do all of that. That's what fires me up at this point, okay? I'm not done doing my work. So yes, I probably could kick up my heels and we would still have a very comfortable life but that's not my that's not my goals and that's not the reality that I want for me or for my daughter to watch. Hey, mom hustled for a couple years and then she stopped. That's not what I want her to grow up watching. I want her to watch, hey, my mom really freaking loves what she does and she works really hard, but she's changing lives. Okay? So, remember at the end of the day, you guys, how truly blessed we are for this opportunity. And it's not supposed to be easy. Take that out of your head. So many of us think, okay, so when I signed up for the multi-level marketing company, Beachbody, because I love the workouts and I love the products, it's gonna be easy to make six figures. What? Have you ever said that out loud, you guys? I used to say that. Like I would be like, oh my God, this is the easiest thing in the world. It's not easy. It shouldn't be easy, you guys. This is a business. You're a CEO of a business, okay? And this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life, aside from giving birth, okay? It was the hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life. But you know what? I don't think I would appreciate it and love it as much as I do if it was easy. It's taught me so much about myself, and it's allowed me to grow into the mom and the wife that my family deserves, you know, and I'm totally going to cry, but my mom, she's like, you know, the person who really put the fuel under my fire when the business got serious. I was still living with them. Okay. And she said, this is a good hobby for you, Meg, but this is never going to get something big. Only the people at the top get, get the money. Right. And I said, mom, watch me, watch me. And a full circle moment sitting in Naples, Florida, a couple about a month ago with my parents we crashed their party and my mom looked at me and she, I had just gotten off speaking on a call for actually this call and my mom looked at me and she said Megan I am so proud of you she's like I I didn't know you had it in you to be the leader that you are ah, like I started bawling you guys I was like, holy crap, do you know how long I've been waiting for you to say that to me? But she said, you know, like you look at the woman that you've grown into, look at the leader that you've grown into. And then I had to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I learned it from my mom because she's, she's run her own business, okay? But she was the one that started that fuel however many years ago and she doesn't know that. Um, but now she's the one that's gonna keep that fire burning too because, you know, now she's, Super proud of me for what, what we've been able to achieve. Okay. So guys, um, any questions on any of this? I see all the comments. Thanks for the support, you guys. Yes, Built to Last is an amazing book by Keith Callahan. Um, let's see. I realize I'm probably the West Coaster. <laughs> I love you, Jamie. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. I'm going to stop this recording.